All right, in this video, we'll be looking at how the standard error relates to sample mean z-scores and how to calculate the probability of getting a sample from random sampling. Now, let's say we're given a problem where we're told the mean of the population is 67, the standard deviation is 20, and we're looking at sample sizes of 30. How do we find the standard error? Well, the standard error is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. We have these values, so we can just sub them in 20 and 30. So 20 is our population standard deviation, 30 is our sample size. Now we can just solve. The square root of 30 comes to 5.477 and change. So we divide that into 20 to get our final standard error of 3.65. Now let's say we want to find the z-score of getting a particular sample, or the z-score of a sample. So let's say the mean is 65 for this sample. Now to figure this out, we write out the formula for a z-score, where the sample mean minus the population mean, that's not a funky m, that's a mu, and then divide in that standard error. Now we have all these values already, so we just have to substitute them in. 65 for the sample mean, 67 for the population mean, and our standard error is 3.65. So 65 minus 67 is negative 2. Divide 3.65 into that, and we get negative 0.55. All right, so now let's say we want to know the probability of getting a sample with a mean less than 65. So the sample mean we already found is z-score 4. So we have to sketch out our little distribution. We know the population mean 67, and it's going to have a z-score of 0, and 65 is our sample mean. And we already calculated out the z-score at negative 0.55, and we want the area less than that, so the tail that I shaded in there. So to solve this, actually all you have to do is look in a table in the back of the book. It's already solved. So the z-score is typically in the left-hand column, so I'm going to fill in a couple of them here, as well as write something illegible and then scratch it out, and then fill in the requisite areas. So when we look in this table, the first thing that we'll actually end up doing is looking up our z-score, 0.55. Now notice it's positive 0.55. The table only gives positive numbers, but it should be symmetrical. And so then we can look at the area in the tail to get our final value. All right, now let's say we were given the same problem, but not broken up into nice little chunks. So the population mean now is 98. The standard deviation of the population is 17. We're working with sample sizes with an N of 45. And you have to figure out what is the probability of getting a sample mean greater than 100. So we know to do this, it's another z-score problem. Okay, so sketch out that distribution. We know that the population mean is going to have a z-score of 0 and a value of 98. And then we know our sample mean, which is 100, not 98, sorry about the error there, is a z-score that we don't know yet. And we need the area greater than that mean, which would be to the right of it, and would be the tail of this distribution. So now we need that z-score. So we write out the z-score formula. We know we need the mean of the sample, the mean of the population, and then the standard error of the mean. Now what do and don't we have? We have the sample mean. We have the population mean. We do not yet have the standard error. So let's write out the formula for standard error. Population standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. We have our population standard deviation. We have our sample size. So we can substitute in those values and solve. Now the way I reason I do it this way is so it gives you these discrete sub goals. So now we're going to find our standard error and then eventually we'll plug that into our formula above. So square root of 45, 6.7 and change, divide that into 17, our population standard deviation. We now have our standard error. And so now we just work our way back up to the top. So 100 minus 98, substitute in our new standard error that we just calculated, and we can just solve this simple math problem. So 2 divided by 2.534 gets us 
just under 1, specifically 0 0.79. Now to finally get that probability, now that we have the z-score, we need to look up the area in the tail. Again, we run to the back of the book, which I can't show you in a YouTube video, so I'm just going to make my own little table right here. So if we have these different z-score values and we have the area in the body for each of them, which ultimately we won't need, we want the area in the tail, but for the sake of being thorough, and then the areas in the tail. So what we'll have to do is look up our z-score, which is 0 0.79, and then it helps if you go ahead and draw a line across and we know we need the area in the tail so draw another line across and we can see that the probability of getting a mean greater than 100 from a population of, with a mean of 98 a standard deviation of 17 and a sample size of 45 is 0.2119